Have you ever felt like the ground beneath you was so fragile, ready to crack at any moment and give out underneath you? Well, our psychological foundation can also feel that fragile, especially if we've suffered from relational trauma in our childhood. Hi, I'm Annie Wright, a licensed psychotherapist and an expert in childhood trauma recovery. Every bit of my work in the world, including today's episode, is designed to support those who come from childhood trauma backgrounds to have the best adulthood possible, despite where we may have started out in life. I'm so glad you're here. If even one piece of what I share today feels helpful to you, if even one piece of information resonates, I'd encourage you to subscribe to this YouTube channel and sign up for my newsletter. I'll link to that in the show notes below. But for now, as part of helping you have the best adulthood possible, despite how you may have started out in life, we're going to explore today's topic, how early relational trauma damages the foundation of our house. In this episode, we'll cover the following, how your psychological life is like a proverbial house, what makes a strong house foundation in childhood, how early relational trauma damages the foundation of our house, how relational trauma can make it feel harder later in adulthood, and I'll provide examples. Now, again, before we dive into today's episode, I want to say again, I truly hope that even one piece of what I share can be helpful to you. The other thing I want to share is that it's really important to remember, no matter where you're starting from, change is possible. With that being said, let's begin our episode today. How your psychological life is like a proverbial house. When it comes to how and why early relational trauma can be so damaging and detrimental to the individual who endures it, I often like to use the metaphor of the house of life with my therapy clients and my online course students to help them understand both the impact of what they endured as well as the criticality of doing their relational trauma recovery work now. So think of life like a proverbial house. When we're building a new house, the first step is, of course, to lay a solid foundation so that we can build sound, sturdy floors on top of it. But what makes a strong house foundation in childhood? When it comes to our early psychological development, the analogous strong foundation we would ideally receive and have laid down as infants and children would be a foundation hallmarked by secure attachments, consistent and responsive caregiving, and a nurturing environment. Research has consistently shown that secure attachment in infancy is crucial for healthy psychological development. And secure attachment, as you know, is formed when a caregiver or caregivers is responsive to an infant's biological and emotional needs, providing a sense of safety and security. Consistent and responsive caregiving also plays a vital role in building this proverbial foundation. This kind of caregiving, similar to secure attachment, but slightly different, helps in the development of secure attachments and emotional regulation which are essential for later success in relationships and personal well-being. Additionally, a nurturing environment that includes stimulation, safety, and positive reinforcement is essential for healthy development. These elements, a secure attachment, consistent and responsive caregiving, and a nurturing environment lay a firm foundation that supports the psychological well-being of infants and children. All of this, these Critical ingredients enables them to grow into resilient and emotionally healthy adults who can then proverbially build more and more floors on top of their house of life. What do floors in this analogy even mean? Well, floors are like additional and often heavily relational responsibilities in the form of dating, mating, and parenting, career progression and advancement, sound financial management, healthy friendships, and so much more. But what happens if you don't get these needs met? 
What happens if the proverbial foundation of your house of life is not sound because you endured relational trauma? What happens to the floors you try and build then? Many trauma thought leaders and advances in neuroimaging have shown us how profound and detrimental the impacts of enduring early relational trauma experiences can be. The work of one of my favorite trauma clinicians, Dr. Alan Shore, emphasizes that secure attachment, consistent emotional availability, attunement, and safety are crucial for the development of the brain's right hemisphere, which governs emotional regulation and social interaction. Research by Dr. Bessel van der Kolk highlights that chronic trauma, including relational trauma, can alter the brain's architecture, specifically affecting the prefrontal cortex, amygdala, and hippocampus, impairing emotional regulation, heightening stress responses, and disrupting memory processing. Another one of my favorite clinical thought leaders, Dr. Judith Herman, points out in her research that children who endure relational trauma often develop dysfunctional coping mechanisms to manage their distress. Some of their big feelings, including pervasive feelings of shame, distrust, and abandonment, among others. All of this prompts maladaptive behaviors like disassociation, self-harm, and substance abuse in those children and adolescents. These myriad impacts, underdeveloped capacities for emotional regulation and social interaction, heightened stress responses, disrupted memory processing, and pervasive feelings of shame and distress, all of this illustrates how profound cracks can develop in our proverbial psychological foundation should we endure relational trauma. Early relational trauma, in other words, damages the foundation of our house, which I personally and professionally believe makes life in later years feel harder. Those proverbial cracks in the foundation make the base of our proverbial house less able to more appropriately bear the weight of added floors, floors being analogous again to added responsibilities, more demanding relationships, advanced life stressors. For example, an adult who endured relational trauma as a young girl, let's call her Jane, was raised by a narcissistic father and a mother with dependent personality disorder. In this case, Jane will likely develop a host of maladaptive beliefs and behaviors through her childhood and adolescence as a result. Jane might have pervasive unconscious maladaptive beliefs such as the only way to get approval is to be perfect and be a good girl. Or, I need to take care of their needs first so I don't get rejected. These internal scripts, these patterns effectively running the show, manifest then as chronic perfectionism and people-pleasing behaviors in Jane's adult life. She strives to excel in her career, often working long hours and taking on more responsibilities than she can handle. Jane avoids making mistakes at all costs. This behavior leads to chronic stress, burnout, and a pervasive sense of inadequacy despite her accomplishments. Additionally, Jane frequently neglects her own needs to prioritize those of others, especially in her personal relationships. She goes out of her way to ensure her partner, friends, and colleagues are happy, often at the expense of her own well-being. She finds it difficult to set boundaries and say no, leading to emotional exhaustion and resentment. This behavior stems from her fear of abandonment and the belief that her worth is contingent upon serving others. By the time Jane reaches her mid-30s, these coping mechanisms become untenable. She feels mentally, emotionally, and physically at the edge of what she can endure. Something has to give. Jane is feeling those proverbial cracks in the foundation of her house of life more and more. So by the time she arrives into the start of her midlife, her mid-30s, the house isn't feeling so sturdy anymore. In fact, it feels like it's ready to cave in. Jane's work now is to go back and do the foundational work to repair the foundation of her house of life so that she can make it all feel sturdier and more tenable moving forward. So without a doubt, enduring early relational trauma can damage the foundation of our house of life, but 
Also, without a doubt, it is possible to repair the proverbial foundation of our house of life that may have been damaged by relational trauma. This is what I do day in and day out in my work as a trauma therapist with my therapy clients. So now I'd love to hear from you. Did the analogy I shared today help you better understand how and why early relational trauma can be so impactful, especially as you take on more responsibilities, AKA floors of your house later in life? If you feel so inclined, please leave a message below so that others can benefit from your share and wisdom. Honestly, you never know who on the other side of the world you might be helping when you share your story or your experience. Finally, if you're still not sure if this content applies to you, if you're still not sure if you come from a childhood trauma history and have some cracks in your proverbial foundation, I would invite you to take my signature quiz. Do I come from a childhood trauma background? It's a five minute, 25 question quiz I created that can be incredibly illuminating and will point you in the direction of a wide variety of resources that can be of further help to you. Plus, when you take the quiz, you'll be added to my mailing list where you'll receive twice a month letters from me sharing original high quality pieces with accompanying YouTube videos and audios you can stream, all of it devoted to the topic of childhood trauma recovery and where I share more about me as a person, my life, and how I'm journeying through my own childhood trauma recovery and general adulthood. My newsletters are the only place where I share intimate glimpses into my life, including photos, the resources that are supporting me, the things I've discovered that delight me, words that are uplifting me, practices that nourish me, and more. So please be sure to sign up for my mailing list whether or not you want to take the quiz. I'll link to both of these things in the show notes below. Finally, thank you so much for listening to me today. I truly hope that even a small part of what I shared today felt helpful to you. If you found value in this information and would like to stay connected with my latest content, please consider giving the episode a like. It helps more than you know. Also, subscribing to my channel and turning on the notification bell ensures you're always up to date with my newest episodes. I really appreciate your support and look forward to continuing this journey with you. So thank you. And until next time, please take such good care of yourself. You're so worth it.